Good afternoon, everyone. It's a really great pleasure uh, to have Roberto Volpato from the University of Padova speaking to us today. And he's going to tell us about Borch's Casamudi algebras in string theory. Okay, thank you, Lisa. So, thank you very much to everyone for uh, inviting me here to speak. So, um, my seminar here is about like some kind of long project that I uh, am working on with. Uh, um, Natalie Paquette, Sarah Harrison, and Daniel Persson. So I've been working on this stuff since 2016. And uh, so there are many papers. I will actually focus on uh, mostly on one of these papers, but then I will a bit uh, give a bit of an idea of what we are doing on the on the rest of it. So let me start by um, giving some uh, motivation for what we do. So. Uh, so we know that Borges cut Moody algebras can be defined in terms of a, a Chevalier Sar generators and relations starting from some uh, suitable Cartan matrix. And then, like, uh, one peculiar property of Borges cut Moody algebras with respect to the other cut Moody algebras is that we allow for uh, imaginary simple roots. Uh, there are actually other nice ways to. Uh, construct and define Borges Katmudi algebras. And one of them is particularly uh, interesting. And it starts essentially from uh, vertex algebras. And it uses some kind of machinery that is a bit borrowed, if you want, from uh, bosonic string theory, or some chiral version of bosonic string theory, let me say that. So I, I, will, I will give you more details about the construction later on. But uh, just to be very sketchy, uh, one starts from some vertex, suitable vertex operator algebra. So uh, in the most famous case, you can start from this uh, uh, monsters module by Frank Lepowski Merman. And then uh, you tensor this vertex operator algebra by a suitable vertex algebra based on uh, a lattice. So this gamma 1, 1 for me is an even unimodular lattice of signature 1, 1. And then you build some state of physical state. So there is some non-trivial procedure to do that, which I'll explain in, in the following. And what you get is that you have a Lie algebra defined in this space of physical states. And essentially, you can prove that it is a Borges Katmudi algebra. And the nice thing about this kind of construction here is that if you have uh, an action of some group by uh, on the uh, vertex operator algebra, you start by the like monster group in this case, then this induces some action on the on the BKM algebra. So this construction was used by Borchers famously to, to prove the uh, monsters moonshine conjecture. So I guess there is not a lot of need to, to review the monsters moonshine conjecture, also given uh, yeah, uh, yeah, the audience, but let me just give a bit of a, a review. So uh, uh, this conjecture started from the observations by McKay and Thompson in the 70s and then was formulated in a bit more uh, precise way by Conway and Norton. So what this conjecture says is that there is a, some natural module for the monster group, a uh, graded module. And it's such that uh, if you write the graded characters for this, uh, uh, for this module, all these, graded, all these functions, which are called the McKay-Thompson series, are actually modular functions for some congruent subgroup uh, gamma g. Uh, but they're not just modular, they are, uh, I mean, the, the, the subgroup is actually a genus zero group, and these functions are the normalized Haupt modules for this genus zero group. So uh, they really give like a uh, biholomorphic map, if you want, from uh, this, the closure of this quotient of the upper half plane by the group into the sphere. And in particular, just as a normalization, uh, condition that for for the identity element uh, that the McKay function series is the um, is the elliptic J function with zero constant terms. So this is this gives the dimensions of all this uh, graded module. Okay. So the the first key step in the proof of this monster motion is was to build a good uh, uh, monsters module with a natural election of the monster group, and it turned out that this was. Uh, a vertex operator algebra, uh, so a holomorphic vertex operator algebra. So uh, by holomorphic, I mean uh, that it has a, a, a unique uh, irreducible module, which is itself. Okay. 
and the monster group acts by um, algebra, vertex algebra, automorphisms. Yeah. So you can build uh, graded characters for all the elements of the monster from this, uh, uh, from this module. And as usual for a vertex operator algebras, you kind of expect the characters to be modular. So uh, I, I, as a physicist, I, I have an intuitive idea as for why it is true, but you can also uh, give, give more precise proofs as for uh, why the graded characters should be modular under some, under some groups. But in general, you don't expect um, these functions to be modular functions for uh, genus zero subgroups. So uh, they could be, you know, uh, higher genus, if you want, and they don't need to be half modules. So it remains to be checked that the graded characters that you build from this vertex operator algebra are indeed uh, the half um, modules for genus zero group. And this was the proved by, uh, by Borchers. And the proof indeed uh, consisted in, in building this borchers katmudi um, Lie algebra and starting from this vertex operator algebra. And then uh, the um, borchers katmudi Lie algebra, you expect them to satisfy some, uh, to have some uh, denominator as Katsmudi algebra that obeys some, um, some denominator identities, okay? And if there is a natural action of the, of the monster group, then you can also expect some uh, twisted denominator identities. Now, I, I don't know, this might be, uh, they look kind of like this. Maybe the right-hand side is a bit, is a bit uh, um, uh, oversimplified, but essentially you have a, a difference of two McKay function series uh, equal to some infinity product where the exponents here uh, depend on the coefficients of this McKay function series. So this, this uh, uh, twisted denominator identities, uh, they imply an infinite number of relations for the um, Fourier coefficients of the, of the McKay function series. And these relations are enough to identify the McKay function series with the how modules of these genus zero groups. So this was a nice story and you can try, you know, uh, on top of being, you know, a nice proof of the monster's moonshine conjecture, it was really cool because uh, it, it pushed people to introduce a, a lot of new structures. So you you could, uh, and you want to, you know, build new examples of these new structures. So, uh, for example, you can try to build more examples of Borges Katsmudi algebras. So one way to do this uh, is repeat essentially the same construction as Borges did, but not for the V natural, but to, for example, for other holomorphic VOAs, a central charge 24. And then you can build a big uh, Borges Katsmudi algebra out of it. So, one example, which actually uh, was found before the monsters algebra, is the, is the fake monster algebra, when you start from the, for example, for the uh, Leech lattice vertex algebra. But then there are many more examples which were constructed by various peoples uh, by changing the holomorphic VOA. Or, so, yeah. This is not really precise. What I meant here, you can build examples from uh, of algebras from twisted denominators. So you start from an algebra like this, you build a twisted denominator, and then this you can interpret as a denominator of some other BKM algebra or super algebra. And, and people use this, for example, um, Scott Karnan and also in part Scheitower or Hearn to build, uh, for example, for the proof of the generalized uh, monsters function. And anytime you have a nice action of some group on the VOA you start from, then you think you have, you might have an induced action on the BKM algebra. Okay. Now these are bosonic algebras, but uh, bosonic vertex operator algebras, but you can try to do the same kind of construction with the uh, vertex operator super algebras. So what you have to do here is uh, uh, holomorphic uh, super uh, vertex operator super algebras, and now the, the right central charge in this case is 12. So there is one uh, good example, which was built by, uh, uh, so it was suggested actually already by Borges, but then uh, the, the more explicit construction was given by Shai Tower, and the, it's called the fake monster super algebra. So the, the, what a bit surprised me a little bit was that there were not many examples of this kind that were built. And 
uh, actually, from our perspective as theoretical physicists, these are really uh, very natural examples you, you would like to look at. So uh, just to give some motivation, so with, uh, with, um, with Natalie, uh, Sarah Harrison, and, and Daniel Persons, at some stage we started, we tried to give a, uh, to like reproduce this construction of uh, the monstrous borges katzmudi algebra, started from superstring theory, okay? and uh, more precisely started from a uh, non-chiral superstring theory. Okay? So I will give you a bit of details later on, but um, what I can tell you is that uh, it is natural to look at uh, bosonic vertex operator algebras if you are looking at a certain kind of superstring theories, which are called heterotic strings, but there are other very natural kind of superstring theories, which are the type two superstrings. And in this case, you really want to look at uh, super algebras with central charge 12. So it's really, uh, we are kind of pushed to look at this, at this kind of examples. So our goal at some stage was to try to build some new interesting examples to this guy. Okay. So is, is this a, a super algebra, the, the one actually suggested in the, uh... In the Beauty and the Beast paper, is it? In the, the Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and Beast paper by Dixon and so on. Yeah. Is the first uh, one? I, do, I don't remember <laughs> the kind of example they suggest there to be. To be they, I remember. They just, the the, yeah, they just the took the took the Z2 orbifold uh, of the Leech lattice and then see the Musha module is just uh, the fixed point. Uh, is just uh, the fixed point um, of the vertex of algebra leech lattice uh, plus the 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 fixed point of a, of a twisted module, but they they actually say that uh, the fixed point of the leech lattice plus the minus one eigenspace of the uh, of the twisted module uh, has a super algebra structure with n equal to one super conformal. Yeah, yeah. So this is. Okay. This is actually central charge 24, though. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so yeah, exactly. So, so okay. it is a kind of, uh, it is the same kind of structure, but somehow it has the wrong central charge to fit in a, okay. in the type two super string. Yeah. Okay, I see. But the, but that's the same kind of that's the same kind of structure. Okay. Yeah. So okay, other questions. So now the question is, okay, how many of these holomorphic superalgebras at central charge 12 do we know? And actually there is a full classification of these guys, which is due to Kreuzig, Duncan, and Riddler from 2018. Uh, yeah, maybe some people uh, yeah, uh, knew a bit of this, but, but this is where this is where this was proved. So if you look at the only the only nice, let's say holomorphic VA superalgebras at central charge 12. Uh, well, there are three of them. Okay. The first one is a like a supersymmetric version of the E8 uh, lattice VOA. So it's the literally the E8 lattice VOA tends with uh, eight uh, free fermions. Uh, and free fermions, if you want, you can see it as a vertex algebra on the uh, lattice Z8. Okay. And this is the vertex uh, super algebra, vertex operator super algebra that. Uh, Shy Tower used to to build the fake monster super algebra. Okay, so this is the one from which we know the we know the corresponding um, BKM super algebra. But then there are two more examples. So one is kind of boring; it's twenty four free fermions. Okay, and one is actually very interesting. So this is the uh, unique uh, vertex operator holomorphic vertex operator super algebra which has no states with um, L0 eigenvalue one half, so conformal weight one half. So this looks very much like the, uh, you know, the analog of the, of the monsters module for, uh, for this kind of uh, super algebras, okay? And actually the construction is not too complicated because in the end it is a, a lattice uh, vertex algebra, which is based on the odd unimodular lattice uh, D12 plus. So let me, so, and this is the, this is really the, the guy we want to look at. And we want to try to build uh, a Borges-Katmudi super algebra starting from this, from this guy, OK? 
Okay. So this um, this kind of super algebra was actually already suggested in in this uh, FLM paper in eighty five, and then also since the Borges and Riba talk about it. Uh, but most of the properties I will discuss were actually um, studied by John Duncan in 2007. So let me give a bit of introduction about this, this guy, this uh, DF uh, natural. So, uh, so this is a super algebra, so it has an even and a, and an odd component, if you want. So there is a conformal vector at central charge 12. And then, uh, so the even subalgebra, it's a VOA, and it's actually a lattice, uh, VOA based on the D12 root lattice. So the, the weight one states, so the currents, the modes of the currents generate a, a SO24 level one, affine the algebra. Okay. So uh, we can look at the, at the uh, modules uh, for this uh, uh, bosonic uh, subalgebra, this uh, VD12, and okay, it's a lattice algebra, so we know very well that uh, the modules uh, uh, correspond to uh, the cosets of the dual of D12 uh, mod by D12. So we have four cosets, and this corresponds to the modules for these guys. So we have the trivial coset, which is the, uh, this uh, VD12 itself, and then we have a vector, a spinor, and a con conjugate spinor coset. Okay? So if we decompose this our super algebra into uh, this um, uh, modules over the even subalgebra, but then VF natural is just the sum of the trivial plus a spinner. Okay, so this spinner is the odd, is the odd component. Okay. So uh, we have um, from from the current zero modes, we know that we have a, a exponentiality in the current zero modes. We have a, a group of inner auto automorphisms which is spin twenty four. Actually, with that, uh, um, uh, there is some. Uh, um, order two subgroup of spin twenty four that that's trivially on the on the algebra. So this plus minus one is is really lift of the um, center of SO twenty four to to spin twenty four. So the the, the uh, group acting uh, faithfully is the quotient. Okay. Now uh, on top of so as I said, this is a holomorphic super VOA. So it, it has only itself as is as this module. But you can look at twisted modules for this, uh, for this algebra. And in particular, you can look at the canonically twisted module. Uh, I mean, uh, a module twisted by uh, the involution that acts by minus one on the odd, on the odd component. So there is a unique uh, canonically twisted module. And if you decompose it, so this is a, an honest module for the uh, even subalgebra. And if you decompose it into into modules, this is just the sum of uh, uh, the vector and the conjugate spinner. So it's the sum of the other two modules. Now, in order to build the BKM super algebra, uh, I don't just need a, a conformal vector, okay? But I really want to have, which generates a Virajoro algebra, but I really want to have an n equals one super Virajoro algebra. So I want, I also want to have like a super current or super conformal vector, which is another element here inside. And it's such that the modes of the supercurrents with the Virasoro modes generate the n equals one super Virasoro. So uh, John Duncan proved that there is uh, up to uh, inner automorphisms, up to spin 24 action, uh, there is a unique supercurrent that you can choose. Okay. And then, so you, we can pick one just to, uh, for definiteness. And then he also proved that the subgroup of spin 24 that fixes this supercurrent is actually a finite subgroup of spin 24, and it's isomorphic to the Conway group, Conod. Okay. So Conod, the usual construction of Conod is as a group of automorphisms of the Leach lattice, but uh, there is no Leach lattice entering in this construction. So this is kind of a, another natural construction of Conod, if you want. So to be precise, um, Conod does not act faithfully on the algebra VF naturally, because the, the center of Conod is exactly this Z2 subgroup. So the, the group acting faithfully on the algebra is really uh, the quotient of Conod by its center, which is the Conway group Co1, which is a simple group. 
However, for our construction, we will also want to have an action of these groups on the twisted module, not just on the algebra, okay? And on the twisted module, uh, co one acts only projectively, so uh, while the central extension co naught acts linearly. So it's really more convenient to, uh, to think in terms of the, of the central extension co naught. okay? So we have a, a very natural uh, Conway module, okay, given by this vertex operator super algebra. And, you know, this is very similar. This is a, a super algebra very similar to the monsters module. So we might ask if there is a, a, some kind of genus zero uh, phenomenon going on. And there is some, but it is a bit in a, in a, in a twisted way, <laughs> let me say. So the thing works like this. So this is the decomposition of DF natural and its twisted module into um, uh, spin 24 or um, into modules for the even subalgebra. So you can build a, a, another uh, vertex operator superalgebra, which, you know, with a very little difference, this is VF natural, this is VS natural. And you just, what you just do, you just exchange the spinner with the conjugate spinner module, okay? And the same in the twisted model. So this is still a vertex uh, superalgebra, and actually it's isomorphic. To the previous one as vertex algebra, so it doesn't look like anything interesting. But uh, if you think of both the, of each of these components as a as a uh, Conway module, then Vs, this blue guy and this red guy, are different Conway modules. So this so this this means that as a Conway modules, Vs natural and Vf natural are different. Okay. And now what you can do is to take the graded traces, okay, uh, with respect to the action of the Conway module, and we will actually take super traces. So this is, uh, you can take super trace over the, uh, this VS natural, or you can take a super trace over the twisted module, okay? And you get some modular functions, and what Duncan and McCray prove is that all these guys are out modules for genus zero groups. Okay, so you have some kind of moonshine in this case. So let me say that I mean this is this is very nice, but also it's a bit it's a bit weird in in some sense because uh, okay, I don't know if John Duncan would agree with me with it on this, but the point is the following: so you have an action of the Conway group, but the action is really natural on VF natural. Okay, on this algebra, because that's the group of automorphisms that fix an n equals one super Virasoro algebra on this. Roberto, I think we have a question. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, uh, can, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, okay, so uh, I was confused when you said that uh, VF and VS are isomorphic as vertex algebras because uh, VS and VC would be V not modules yes w would that imply if they're isomorphic as vertex algebras why doesn't it imply that vs and vc are isomorphic well they are isomorphic as modules they are not isomorphic as uh, uh, conway modules so the ac the action of the conway group is different so the conway group is a is a subgroup you can see it as a subgroup of spin 24 okay but it acts differently on the spinner representation and the Conjugate spinor representation. It's not the same. Okay. Is this is this clear? Yeah, okay. Okay. So the only thing that changes from from the first to the second line is really the action of the Conway group. In particular, the Conway group Conod fixes an element in Vs, which is which is my supercurrent, but doesn't fix any element in Vc, for example. Uh, at, at least any any weight weight three half element that could serve as a supercurrent. Okay. So so you can actually view like uh, uh, on VS you have another Conway action right. So you just change the Conway action. In some sense, it's like this, right? Yeah, you can think exactly. You can think about yeah exactly. You can think in in that sense. So in that sense, you would say okay, I have a Conway action that fixes some element, some, I don't know, intertwining operator in my twisted module, mm -hmm. I guess. 
Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's a that's a good that's a nice description mm -hmm. of it. But uh, it's not. I mean, I think this is kind of more natural because the the element that is fixed here is really the supercurrent that generates an n equals one super Virasoro algebra, which is like the natural thing, you know, the natural kind of group you want to look at in a sense. Okay. This is a bit. This mm -hmm. in this action is a bit less natural in a sense mm -hmm. because you fix some element some. Of, uh, some element here inside that okay can look nice, but that's not the first thing you can think about. Thank you. So from from this point of view, it's a bit strange. Uh, but I mean, on the other hand, you know, the the, the moonshine properties are really for the uh, for this action of Pongui, so on the S natural, not on not quite on the F natural. So what I want to show is that. Uh, so I stress this point because when we will be the we will build the um, super algebra starting from uh, we will start from the F natural because that's the guy that has a natural that has a n equals one uh, super Virasoro structure that we we will need. But actually, somehow magically, we will end up finding uh, super traces for the uh, the S natural for the other for the other module. Okay, and this is kind of will be kind of built in in the way the Borchers Katsumudi super algebra arises. So in this sense, uh, this gives a bit of a um, of a way of understanding why the genus zero property is in this module and not and not in the other Conway module. Okay. So yeah, let me. So the question is, can we obtain this these guys from denominators of BKM maybe super algebras. Okay. So, uh, so what we want to do then is to build this BKM super algebra starting from this VF natural. So let me say they say that uh, the construction that we are using uh, does not use uh, very you know uh, new fancy things in the sense that it is really a generalization of, of what uh, other people have been doing. Uh, in particular, okay, Shai Tower in particular for uh, for this super algebra. So, so we follow a bit uh, its construction. So let me give you a bit on a um, a very uh, sketchy idea of what we will do, and then I will enter more into details. So what you do is you take your vertex super algebra, for example, VF natural, you tensor it with something else that will be more precise now, and then what you want is that the whole thing is a um, has a n equals one super Virasoro algebra with a central charge, total central charge zero. So this is central charge 12. So the total of the rest must be minus 12. So it will be something, it will not be a, a operator, vertex operator algebra, but it will be a bit of vertex algebra. So what you do is that then you restrict to some special subspace, which essentially will be the kernel of L0. And this subspace has many gradings. So in particular, it is graded by what I will call with, with the physics parlance is a, a momentum. So this momentum k takes values in some lattice that at the end of the construction, this will be the root lattice of your BKM algebra. And for example, for VF natural, this will be uh, this gamma one one, the hyperbolic lattice with signature one comma one. But then you have two more gradings. You have a ghost number grading by an integer and a picture number grading by um, integer or half integers. So then you do, so what I will do is, uh, is uh, like a BRST construction of our, of the physical space of states. So to, what you do, you have to define some operator, which is called a BRST operator, and it's a near potent operator. So this nilpotent operator preserves the, the momentum and the picture number rating, and it just in test goes number one. Okay, so it just raises the the Gauss number degree. So you, essentially, you build a complex using this nilpotent operator, and the Gauss number is the degree of your complex. And then you can look at the cohomology for this complex, and you build a space. Of states out of this cohomology. So the states of space, so what will happen is that actually the cohomology in a sense will be concentrated at degree one. So all the other degrees uh, will be will give trivial groups. 
So you just look at the degree one piece and you go look at the very special picture numbers, which is the minus one, the minus half, and you sum over all, all momenta. So this is how you build your space of physical states. And then what you have to prove is that this space of physical states, uh, there is a Lee super bracket defining it. And with this Lee super bracket, essentially, you prove that it is a, a, a BKM, a BKM super algebra. So let me give you more details, a bit more details about the construction. So this is really the vertex al super algebra you start from. So this is VF natural, which is uh, n equals one such as 12. Then you have another piece, which is a lattice. It is a super symmetric version of your lattice algebra on the even self dual. Uh, gamma. Yes. Uh, is, is gamma like R4? If, like... Sorry, is gamma? Uh, like, do you think that like for string theory that gamma would be R4? No. So in, case, in which sense are for the sense of real? Because I, I would think that that momentum would uh, live like in R4, like in the physical space. So ah, okay, okay. Sorry. 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 so uh, but actually you, th once you think of this as being compatified down to two dimensions, so in one plus one dimensions. So this is the momentum in, 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 in one plus one dimensions. So, oh. so the thing is, so the thing is that this kind of construction is a chiral construction. So it is it is a bit difficult to give a, a physical intuition in terms of space time. Okay, but uh, you can do a slightly different construction where you go down to um, essentially you you your string theory describes a strings that moves in a um, in two dimensions. So it's a bit weird because it's not a physical space, but you know you can do physics in, in one plus one dimensions. And then you have, in particular, it will be like the space, the space part will be a circle, and then you have time. Okay. And then you can have momentum along the circle. Okay, so you can have strings that carry momentum along along the circle. So in this sense, and the momentum is somehow quantized, this is discrete momentum. And so it's actually over Z, it's not over R, because the, because the momentum and winding are quantized. Yes. So if you have a compact space, then your momentum is quantized. So the problem, okay, let me say this. So what this construction would be, in, from a physical point of view, would be somehow like having both space and time compatified. On a circle. This is what it would be. Okay. If you have both space and time compatified on a circle, okay, then you have quantized momentum along both circles. Okay. And the discrete and discrete momenta would form a lattice, which is not exactly this, but more or less look like this. So it's very difficult to give a, a real physical interpretation to this construction. Okay. Which is why, because it is a chiral construction. So there's a different way to to build uh, to build this that where maybe there's a bit, the physics a bit more transparent. So let me maybe I will skip a bit of stuff and I will give you a bit more intuition toward the end about what's sorry, happening. Sorry, just like last question. So I, I should think of gamma one one as z squared, where. Uh, the where it has a pairing with signature. Like plus and minus? Yes. Okay. Like like tone, like tone directions, if you want. Thank you. Yeah. So this is yeah, this is this lattice, plus it is made super symmetric by adding like two preferments. Then there is a okay, let me skip a bit of technical stuff. So you have to to do the BRST construction, you have to have a, a ghost sector, uh, which is given by some. BC and beta gamma systems. So these are guys which have the wrong spin statistics. So the odd guys are integral at zero value and the even guys have a half integral at zero eigenvalue, which is a bit strange. And okay, the, the ghost part is the one that carries, if you want, both the picture number and the ghost number grading. Okay, in particular, 
uh, integral picture number is a real module for the ghost part, and the half integral picture number is a, like a twisted module for this uh, super algebra. Okay. So the grading comes from uh, this gamma one one is the K, the, what they call momentum, and then a picture number and ghost number comes from the ghost part. And then you do something a bit strange. So you don't just take your, your vertex algebra, okay? but you want to put to take both the vertex algebra and all and the twisted modules. Okay? This is the vertex algebra sector is what is called the uh, Neve-Schwartz sector in physics. And this is what is called the Ramon sector. So at the end of the day, this guy will give rise to your uh, even subalgebra of your BKM. And this will give rise to the odd component. And then you have to, to make it, uh, uh, and then you have to make a certain projection on, a, on, a, on an evolution, on the positive side under an evolution okay, that you define on both of these. Okay. So starting from this space, then you can build your, your space C, which is the kernel of L0. And we do what is called the relative cohomology. So uh, you have a take a kernel of a, one of the anti ghosts. And then you this inherits the grading from picture number, ghost number, and momentum. And then you define a BRST operator as a zero mode of a certain current. And the only thing that I want to stress is that the BRST operator is built in terms of the conformal vector of your vertex algebra and the super conformal vector. Okay. So this means that um, what happens is that only the group of automorphisms of your algebra that preserves the super conformal, uh, super virus or algebra, only that thing will induce a, a, a nice action on your BKM algebra at the end, because only that, only that, only those automorphisms they um, induce a good uh, action on the on the Q cohomology. Okay, so you build this. So you, you define your BRST, the important BRST operator, and you define the cohomology. And then this cohomology groups have two properties. First, as I said, they are concentrated and degree uh, one, okay, at least for k different from zero. And then essentially you have an isomorphism between different picture numbers. Okay, so you can shift the picture by, by one. Okay. So essentially you can just separate the integral pictures and the half integral. So at the end of the day, what you do, you, you build a space of physical state, physical space states, which is given by just the degree one homology. And then you pick what two particular pictures, which are called the canonical pictures, which is uh, one integral and one half integral. Okay. So this is the neve schwartz sector. So the even sector in a sense of this is the Ramos. And then on this Roberto, phase, Roberto, yeah. a question. Um, so what's happened to the ghosts in this? Because you because they're supposed to be non-physical, right? Uh, so the ghosts are morally still there, <laughs> in the sense that um, you can make uh, you can make an isomorphism between as vector spaces and also as Conway modules between these. Uh, these cohomology groups and like components of this VF natural, if you want. But it's not exactly that they are, I mean, it's not exactly that they are representatives of the, of the cohomology class. So one has to be a little bit careful in making the correspondence. So there is a one-to-one a one -one correspondence, but uh, it's, not, it's not so, so um, it's not so immediate in a sense, okay? I don't know if I, um, so, so it's just that, um... so somehow you can, you can, you can use the, so the thing is the following, you can use the, the fact that your elements in the cohomology are Q closed and the freedom to add Q exact states to, in some sense, eliminate the ghosts, okay? So you can choose a representatives where it, ghosts do not appear. Oh, so they do exist. Yeah. I see. Yeah. So, okay. and related to this, there is the fact that actually 
you can define a nice non-degenerate bilinear form when you on on the cohomology essentially. Okay. Anyway, you can define a super D bracket on these guys. Okay, and this is also standard. It was done by Leanne and Zuckerman, and this is built really in terms of the uh, vertex algebra, which is underlying. And this means that you you can interpret somehow these guys as a as a Lee super algebra, okay? Where the even part is essentially these these guys, and the odd part is given by these guys. So this comes from the Neve Schwartz sector. So this comes really from the vertex algebra side, and this comes from the twisted modules, if you want, of your vertex algebra. Okay. So there is a little mismatch at zero momentum, but just you can kind of forget it. And the K actually here turns out to be um, um, labels the, so, I mean, this is the root lattice. This is what happens. So the Cartan subalgebra in this Lee superalgebra is the uh, even um, K equals zero component, which is just isomorphic to R2. So you have a rank two superalgebra with a non-degenerate symmetric, in, uh, super symmetric, so it means that uh, symmetric uh, for, uh, I mean, symmetric or skew symmetric depending on whether you have even or odd elements. Okay. Another question. Yeah. So I know there's been a lot of compactification, but this is the same root lattice as the monster. The monster. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So what's so it's so it's got it's a Lie algebra that's, that's graded the same way as the monster. Yeah, it's a super algebra. Though. Yeah. Not the not the not the Lie algebra. It's, right, the Lie super algebra. algebra. Yes, yes. But um, yeah. but but the even part, uh, for example, is looks something like the monster Lie algebra. So. Um, uh, that's different multiplicities, though. For for. That, uh, okay, so that was going to might be my next question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The multiplicities are different. Okay. Um, um, so the reason why it does the same root lattice is essentially because both the monster VOA and this super VOA uh, don't have the uh, like small conformal weight states. So the monster VOA is missing the weight one states, okay? And this uh, vertex operator algebra SRT is missing the weight of half states. And somehow they play the same roles in the sense that the dimension of this space is always in the two construction is is related to the rank of the algebra that you obtain. So if the dimension is zero, you get you get to rank just to rank two because you only have the grading from this uh, momentum part. If the if you have more of these states in other constructions, then you have uh, a, a different lattice with a higher rank in general. So and what you can prove is that this is really a borges Moody super algebra. And the current, what we use is just the characterization of this uh, super algebra, which is of borges Moody super algebra, which uh, is, a, is a like uh, a variation on a theorem of a characterization of borges Moody algebra, which was given by Borges, but adapted for super algebra. So what we just did is to, you know, do a checklist to, to to see the dual hypothesis in this in this line of work, work so, to speak. so let me give you a bit more details about this algebra. So the root lattice is gamma one one, as I said. So there is a natural action of Connaught, and just to give you a bit more of an idea of how it is done. So you have a, a even components and odd components. So let me just label the elements of gamma one one by a pair of integers. So the even components, which is the Neville Schwartz sector, come from VF natural, in a sense. And you can prove that as Connaught representation, they are isomorphic to this piece of VF natural. The reason why this other piece does not appear is due to this GSO projection that we did. We did a projection on some, um, with respect to some involution. Okay. And this projected out all these guys, and only these guys are left. The other part comes from the twisted modules. And in this case, the GSR projection selects this guy here. So you have the even parts, which come from this VS, and the other parts, which come from this. And they are naturally, they have a natural action of conod induced by the 
action on the algebras. So this BKM superalgebra has no real roots, and these are all, all imaginary, imaginary roots. So you can try to write the denominator formula for this. So uh, you have to split between positive and negative roots by choosing a regular element. And then, for example, you can choose positive roots to be the ones with M positive. So this is a good choice. And then you can write that for super algebras, you have both a denominator and a super denominator. So uh, here, these exponents here are the multiplicities of the even in the numerator and the odd part of your algebra in the denominator. And they're given by dimensions of this um, Vs and Vd of these modules of your vertex operator algebra. And in general, you expect to have some uh, denominator identities for this denominator. So you expect to have uh, an additive. OK, this is written as an infinite product, but you expect to have maybe some um, some way of writing your denominators as, as, a, as a sum over uh, a wild transformation of certain, uh, of certain objects. Okay. So to be precise, actually, this is a bit stupid in this case, because the vile group for this algebra is trivial. So you don't have a sum over vile elements. But this, uh, these t's in the borges katmudis algebra are like complicated sums of uh, mutually orthogonal um, imaginary roots, and this gives all the all the complicated stuff. So what is the what are the denominator formula in this case? Well, you can prove uh, the formula the following identities. So the the denominator turns out to be have, to be equal to this guy. Okay. So this is just uh, uh, some eta products, and then you see you have a, a character over your uh, Vx natural twisted. So it's, it's over the twisted sector of your BS nature. So this is the denominator. And this is the super denominator. OK, this is just the products. And the way you prove, well, two, the second identity you prove just by direct calculation. And the first one, you prove that the left-hand side must be um, like a, a formal P-series with coefficients which are modular functions for a, for a genus zero group gamma naught two. And then, you just check that, and and the right hand side has the is the same, has the same properties, and then you check that the uh, asymptotic behavior at the cusps uh, is the same. So the polar and the constant term at the cusps is the same for both sides. And since they are the same, then you you say it must be the same. And then from the from the super denominator, so interpret these identities as super denominator identities, and from this you can check what the simple roots are. So the simple roots have this form. So they are of form 1 comma n with n positive. And that the multiplicity of the even, the even and all the multiplicities are the same for this kind of roots. And then you have some null roots of the form n comma 0. And this, you have no even multiplicity, and you just have a 24 as an odd, as odd multiplicity. So this is the way this. Uh, these are the properties of this object. So now, since you have an action of Conway, you can also build, you know, twisted denominator identities. And in the twisted denominator identities, what appears is essentially are essentially the super traces of G, in particular in the uh, super denominator identities, the super traces of G over this Vs natural. So you see, we started with Vf natural to build our BKM algebra. But then we end up having this Vs natural for two reasons. First, because we have to use both the algebra and the twisted module for the algebra to, to build the even and odd part of our BKM. And then we have to do this GSO projection that you know gives just some components of it. So in this reason, in this way, somehow it is natural that this is the guy that, that should should appear here. That's the that's in a sense the reason. So, okay, just quickly say that the same construction you can do for the boring case, if you want, so you, which is the 24 free fermions. So it turns out that the 24 free fermions are just not as boring as you would think, because, I mean, they're maybe a bit boring as a vertex algebra, but then you have to choose an n equals one super conformal vector. 
So these were for free fermions that were classified by Goddard and Olive. And it turns out that there are 18 equivalent n equals one sources of n equals one supercurrents. And they are like in one-to-one -one correspondence with uh, like finite Lie algebras of dimension 24. Okay. So essentially what happens is that uh, if you try to take now this, this uh, vertex operator super algebra with one of these n equals one supercurrents, and you do the same BRST construction as before, you find some BKM super algebra, okay? Uh, whose root lattice is gamma one one plus the root lattice of the corresponding finite dimensional D algebra. Okay. So really it is the same vertex super algebra, but the choice of different n equals one supercurrents give different nilpotent operators that you use to build the cohomology. And then different nilpotent operators to build the cohomology gives really uh, different algebra structures. So this is really uh, quite weird in a sense, but, but this, is, uh, uh, this is the way it works. Okay. So this is the, okay. I think I'm a bit over time now, but um, so how much time do I have or I'm... <laughs> Should I stop? It's not, it's not at a time yet because the yeah, you, you started at twelve ten. Oh, you actually okay. you started at twelve fifteen. Yeah. So. Yeah. Take okay. It. So let me give a bit of a sketchy idea of of a. Uh, okay. This was like, in a sense, very similar to Shai Tower's construction of, uh, like a big ch chiral super string theory. But as I said, it's a bit difficult to give an intuition of this construction from from a physical or space time point of view. So let me give a bit of uh, a sketch idea of what to do to get to more sensible, in a sense, uh, super strings. So these are what I would call non chiral super strings, which are like really the standard construction that you do in super strings. Okay. So what we will do is that we will build some super string models that at the end of the day, they will describe a string moving in a two dimensional space time where the space is along the circle, and then you have a time direction. Okay. So what changes is instead of taking like a vertex algebra, which is something like purely holomorphic inside, so it's a holomorphic CFT, if you want, you take a non-holomorphic CFT. So something which has both holomorphic and anti-holomorphic side. Okay. So what it is the following, you have an internal, CFT, if you want, which is the product of a um, um, vertex operator algebra or super algebra times uh, some uh, anti holomorphic version of your super VOA. So already you have a holomorphic tensor anti holomorphic side. And then you take a, an honest super conformal field theory, which means something that does not really factorizes into holomorphic and anti holomorphic. It's a super conformal field theory on a circle on the space time, essentially. And then you have a ghost sector to build the PRST. Okay. So in fact, you have two kind, two kind of super strings. One is heterotic super string, where the holomorphic side is a bosonic VOA, a central charge 24, or you have a type two super string, where the holomorphic side is a, um, a super VOA central charge 12. On the anti-holomorphic side, you always have a super VOA a separate charge state. Now you can build the physical space of physical states using some like more complicated version of PRST homology. So this, but you don't get a, a BKM super algebra just on the space of physical states. You have to do a, like, something a bit more complicated. You have to restrict to some special states, which are called BPS states which are sp states that preserve, uh, that are invariant under some a supersymmetry in space time. So if you preserve them to, some, to this subspace in this particular kind of model, then you really find that this subspace somehow corresponds to your BKM, either to a BKM algebra in the heterotic construction or a, BT, a BKM super algebra. So let me do this, for example, for V natural. So this is the construction that we did in 2016. So you start with the V natural, the FLM module, times VF natural on the anti-holomorphic side. And then you have 
a superconformal heat theory. Okay. So what happens is that uh, then you do you can be, do the same BRST construction, restrict to physical to the cohomology, which is physical states, and then put the, this additional condition that you restrict to states which are BPS, so which means they preserve some supersymmetry. And it turns out that as a as a vector space, but also as a graded vector space in a sense, but also as a as a monster module, this is isomorphic to the monsters of the algebra, the most monsters BKM, tensor some uh, an interesting R24 where the monsters act trivially. Okay. And what you can do, so one interesting thing is that these are all these BPS states turn out to be actually space time fermions, which is a bit weird because this is a, you, know, you get the BKM algebra, not the super algebra. Now, this is space of single string states. And from this, you can build a space of multi string states, which means uh, you allow for any number of strings in your space time. And because they are all space-time fermions, so what happens is that you don't get just a tensor product of these of, of this states, but you have something like a, 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 an exterior product over this. Okay, so you take like uh, um, like the product of all you know for all grading of you know infinitely many grading. Okay, so that that's that, that's a exterior product of this of this guy. So it turns out that so you would think that there is no grading because I eliminated the gamma one one vertex algebra in this case, but actually there is still a grading by the same lattice. And wh when that is, where does the grading come from in this case? So this is a bit different. So the grading comes from the fact that str streams can carry quantized momentum along S1, which is compound direction, and can also wind S1. A certain, an integer number of times. Okay. And there is a natural pairing somehow between uh, momentum and winding in theory, which gives really uh, um, this, so that essentially this, uh, this M and W takes value. So momentum and winding really takes that value in this uh, even unimodular lattice with signature one comma one. So the way this, this lattice come from is very different from the previous case. In the previous case, morally, what we did was to take S1 on space and also S1 on time, and then take like a holomorphic half of this CFT. And then you get the gamma 1, 1 with one space direction and one time direction. In this case, the gamma one one comes only from the space direction, but comes from the both having a holomorphic and anti-holomorphic side on the space direction. Anyway, you can write a thermal partition function for this on this multi-string state. Okay, so this uh, partition function it depends on a temperature, on energy of your of your states, and then you can introduce. Uh, two formal variables, B and U, that like keep track of the winding and momentum number. Okay. So the energy depends on the momentum winding and also depends on the radius of your circle in this way. So this is something that depends on four real parameters, inverse temperature, radius of the circle, where you compatify, and then these two formal variables, B and U. So you can rearrange these four real parameters into two complex parameters. And if you do that as a function of these two complex parameters, what you get is just the, the denominator of the borges katsmudi algebra to the power 24. Okay. The power 24 is because you have like 24 copies of it from as a single string state. And, and there is a natural action, action of the monster group of this. So you can build twisted denominators just by inserting some element of the monster group in the super trace. And okay, now I'm over time, but you can understand modularity of this guy in terms of uh, T-dualities in string theory. And we gave also a quite complicated, I would think, interpretation of the genus zero property. 
of the of this uh, of the um, BK function. Sorry. So this is what we did in 2016 for the monster BKM algebra, but you can do the same. You can do something very similar for the, um, so this is a mistake. So this would be VF natural. So you can do something similar, but instead of taking V natural here, you take VF natural, okay? And then you do the same construction and you get the denominators for the, uh, this Conway BKM super algebra. That I just that I just constructed. Okay. So, so just as open questions. So you would like to be able to like prove Conway moonshine using this, or prove is a bit stupid because it is proved. It's not you know, formally it's not too complicated to prove it in this case. But uh, you can. It was proved by Duncan and McCrane directly. But you can give some. Try to give some nice explanation of moonshine, of Conway moonshine, using this kind of superstar theory. And uh, the nice thing is that you really have, you know, uh, you really have like strings now moving in, in space time, and you have a BKM algebra popping out there. And the way it works is really that this space of BPS states should be understood like as a as a module over your. BKM algebra or your BKM super algebra, depending on which model you're you're considering. So there is really a way to uh, you know think in terms of these algebras acting on these uh, BPS states. So it would be nice to to understand what's the uh, what's the meaning. I mean, they're a bit they're still a bit exotic, I have to say, as a string theorist, but uh, still there is there's a bit of physics intuition behind this and. Uh, you know, and you can do, you know, you have many, many examples of this, of these constructions that, that seem to work quite naturally. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, I think I will stop, stop now, I guess. Let's um, unmute and thank Roberto. Thanks so much for a really wonderful talk. Uh, really insightful and interesting. Um, so are, are you getting a, are you getting a picture of the um, the general theory in physics that gives rise to these uh, Borchard's Kasmudi algebras? Uh, yeah, we're trying we're trying to to understand what it means. I mean, it's it's kind of rare to have such huge infinite dimensional Lie algebras acting on you know space time superstrings. <laughs> Somehow it's very it's a bit. I mean. Okay, there are there are there are examples actually of this, but uh, I mean I think we don't fully understand in which sense it is a symmetry, in which physical sense it is a symmetry. We still like in which sense it preserves some correlation functions that you can compute. Okay. That's the that's what we look. So you would think that you can like write correlation functions starting from these PPS states, and there is a way to say that they are invariant under this, the action of this algebra, but it's not so easy to, to do this in a, in a like, consistent way. So we, we were trying to work on that, although we were sidetracked by other projects. So we, <laughs> it's a bit of a, like, a sleeping project at the moment. But, uh, oh, I certainly understand. But I think, I think mathematicians would be very, very interested in in your answer, if you can, uh, once you get there eventually. Yeah. I mean, one possibility, you know, so BPS states are like a small subset, subspace of the physical states of the theory, but they are the ones that appear when you do things like topological strings. So you can do some kind of construction, which is, yeah, which is exactly what is called topological strings, where you kind of simplify your string theory, and then the space of physical states is just this BPS subspace. And usually that's where, you know, some nice structure that you can actually handle usually pop out, because otherwise it is, it is usually very difficult to, uh, it is too complicated to handle, but yeah. So the, uh, the here, um... The vertex algebra and the super algebras are all so-called holomorphic, right? So you you have only one irreducible modules. 
Yeah. It, so, yeah. So the 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 for for myself actually, I, I I'm more, more interested in the more general case. Like if the vertex operator is not holomorphic, um, then see the uh, this part. I think the the in your slides you have this V natural tensor V bar F natural. So it will be it will be that you will include all the modules and so on. So the is this construction still work? In the in the such a general case, um, at the very least, it will be much more complicated. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I certainly it will be. But I see the uh, what what is your intuition about this? Yeah, it's certainly much more natural from even from the string theory point of view because you usually don't have this factorized right. factorized thing. You really you really have the the case that you are talking about where you have. Right. Like, I mean, already having a rational, uh, a rational algebra, so you have like finitely many modules is, is already right. a special case. Right. So this is this is super special in that case. Right. Uh, the problem, the problem there is that, um, yeah, uh, when I when I kind of restrict to this BPS mm -hmm. subspace, roughly speaking, that picks up only the holomorphic side. Of your super string algebra, that's what it does. So the anti-holomorphic side is kind of washed away; it doesn't play a big role, okay. Okay. and that's why then it's easy to build an algebra because then it's really a vertex. You know, use the fact that you have a holomorphic vertex algebra okay. on the left side. Okay. Well, if you yeah, if you don't have this factorization thing, then things get much more complicated. I would say uh, much more interesting also, but but much more complicated. I would say. So basically, the the super conformal symmetry on this uh, uh, v bar f natural is to use to construct the 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 bist operator or something, right? Is yeah. it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This is cool for the twenty four free fermions because you start with the same CF. In a sense, you start from the same CFD, mm -hmm. and then you just change the supercurrent, and you have, and you get totally different BKM algebras. Uh -huh. Because the cohomology is different and they have different rank. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, it's uh, that's kind of nice. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording.